The former Disney child star turned YouTube pest, turned pro boxer, turned fight promoter Jake Paul, is in training to face one of the most fearsome men in boxing's long and glorious history, Mike Tyson. Except why? The obvious answer is money, but that's just depressing for everyone. For Jake Paul, the problem child, has proved himself to be an excellent earner in his four-year career. Despite only having 10 fights, mostly against retired UFC stars, Paul has leveraged his significant fan following and created piles of cash. And good for him. The problem is that the problem child wants to become a world champion, which makes this bout a massive waste of his time. Instead of progressing his career, Paul is fighting a 10-round exhibition bout against a retiree that will do exactly zero for his championship aspirations. Now, some people might say, but he's fighting Mike Tyson, and that would have meant everything back in the day. But it's 2024, where it means absolutely nothing. In the 90s, Tyson was the sport's heavyweight savior, a pay-per-view juggernaut who made people angry about value for money because he knocked people out too fast. He was amazing, and since retiring, his legend has grown into mythic proportions. The thing here is that he hasn't fought professionally since back-to-back -back losses, with the last of them coming in 2005. That's not to mention the fact he lost every bout in his three main rivalries. People forget the hard times, though, and they'll still pay big bucks for some of that Tyson ultraviolence. But will they get that? He'll be 58. He's not the beast he was, and we saw that four years ago when he couldn't knock out a 51-year-old Roy Jones Jr. Meanwhile, the 27-year-old Jake Paul has shown some real athletic prowess in his fast-track career. He doesn't have the experience or the skill, neither of which he'll ever have if we're all being honest, but he does have a few significant advantages. Again, Paul is 27. He's younger by over three decades. He's also taller, has a significant reach advantage, and he knocks guys out. Clearly, that wouldn't have bothered Tyson when he was laying waste to all comers, but that was two decades ago, and that's all that really matters. Let me explain. In his prime, Roy Jones Jr. was the pound-for-pound -pound king. He's hands down one of the best boxers to ever lace up a glove. He sits well above Tyson on any respectable pound-for-pound -pound list you'll find. Jones is way out of Tyson's league for skill and ability. But in his 50s, Jones wasn't even close to the phenom who won world titles from middleweight all the way up to heavyweight. And how do we know that? Because Jones's last boxing bout was a loss against Anthony Pettis, a former UFC lightweight champion who was 37 at the time. Pettis had never even competed in MMA above welterweight, yet he outpointed Jones in boxing at cruiserweight. On the other side of that coin, in 2022, Jake Paul outboxed the UFC's former striking savant, Anderson Silva. Unlike Pettis, Silva was a middleweight, the best middleweight in history who occasionally ventured up to light heavyweight, where he once gave the dual light heavy and heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier a hard time, and Paul boxed Silva up. So if Jake Paul can outbox the middleweight UFC GOAT Anderson Silva two years ago, and Mike Tyson couldn't beat Roy Jones Jr. four years ago, then you have to imagine Tyson adding another zero to his exhibition record, while Paul adds zero to his championship plans. Then again, they'll both be adding multiple zeros to their bank accounts, which is now apparently all that matters in boxing. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.